Thank you very much for coming. Um, my name is John Dodd. Uh, I'm CEO of Bunnyfoot, and I'm going to be kind of comparing uh, this uh, this session this afternoon. Um, we're really glad uh, you could join us, and we've got a great uh, great lineup for you, as you can see from your your programmes, and also here. Um, I'll talk more about that uh, in a little while. Uh, well, first, I just want to say uh, a little bit about a uh, bit, bit about Bunnyfoot. Um, I think. Lots of you already know us and have, have worked with us, and really this is a way uh, of us uh, kind of reconnecting and connecting with you, and also thinking and providing a forum about what we're going to do uh, in the future. Um, so we've entitled this whole series JUICE, uh, which stands for uh, Joined Up Interactive Customer Experience, um, and I'll explain a bit more about what that means uh, in a second. Um, first though, if you'll indulge me, I just want to show you some of where we've come from uh, as Bunnyfoot. We're, we're now, uh, we've just moved offices. Uh, we've got a spanking new office uh, in Clerkenwell uh, with new labs and everything, and that, that's all fantastic. But I want to show you uh, a little bit about where we came from and, and kind of things that have shaped our thinking. So just indulge me a second. Um, this is really to embarrass Rob, my uh, CEO and co-founder. Um, Now, have you ever set, sat in your car, maybe late for work, knowing you've got a million and one things to do? Well, thousands do, but in the not-too-distant future, you may be able to do a substantial amount from the driving seat. One dot-com company from Oxfordshire is convinced we're accelerating towards an Internet car future. And as Sarah Campbell found out, they've got the wheels to prove it. Commuting is a fact of life for many people these days, as is using the Internet. Combining the two can be time-consuming. And that's exactly what one Harwell-based dot-com company hopes its prototype internet car will allow. Well, it's very simple. Uh, for example, if I want to check my email, just got to press a few buttons and um, let's, uh, have a listen to what I've got today. John, to give advice on marketing, look forward to seeing you there. The idea has come from software designed to enable blind people to use the net. Instead of a screen, this system uses audio menus. It's probably no more difficult than changing a channel on a radio station or making a hands-free call from a mobile phone. Several major car manufacturers are already looking at putting the internet in their cars. So in just a couple of years, saying you've been in the car all day and so missed that all-important email from your boss just won't wash. This is Sarah Campbell for BBC South Today in Harwell. That was in 2000, 2001, and we developed uh, the UK's first internet-enabled car. Now, our purpose there was to demonstrate not particularly that we've got a car or we do anything to do with cars, but that the internet is more than looking at a screen, looking at a big screen. It was about having a good experience, being able to be in different environments, and also uh, thinking about accessibility and access to information where and when you need it. That all kind of got lost in the message throughout, and we, we, we got lots of publicity through that. We got kind of boffins create first internet car and all that kind of stuff. But the point about it was that we were looking to the future, and we were trying to think about how people are going to be interacting with services that we provide at different points in the future. I don't know if any of you have seen uh, recent press. Um, Apple recently with, with their Siri platform, they've now got a voice output platform as well. Essentially, we predicted that in, in 2000. So um, we own the IP, so Apple are going to be paying us lots and lots of money, hopefully. Um, now, we were also thinking about, even in 2000, the way that different people will start communicating with each other and how we're going to, to reach our customers. Um, so I've embarrassed Rob by showing a video of him. I want to embarrass myself now by showing uh, Bunnyfoot's first uh, internet site. So this was circa 2000. It's really quite embarrassing, but I'll just show you. And if we go to April the 5th, this is our homepage. Look at the state of that. Now, actually, if you look at most sites, including the BBC and all sorts of different sites that we, that we know and love, and you see them archived from 10 years ago, they really do look like a dog's dinner compared to where we are. So our perceptions have, have really changed. Um, the interesting thing about this, though, is looking back on it, we've actually got some really corking, cracking content on there. So we've got all sorts of stuff about kind of what we do. But over here, 
we were talking at Wireless Wednesday, it was a big Microsoft event, it was talking about the future of interactions. We were talking about kind of data and how, how people are going, and we were demonstrating the Bunnyfoot car. Also below it, you can see we had um, uh, a, uh, an article here, are you ready for multi-channel commerce? I remember making the graphic to, to kind of advertise all of that. We were talking about not just being limited to, to web browsers. We were talking about mobile. We were actually talking about WAP in those days, um, which, of course, never took off for the big reason that it was a really disgusting, horrible experience for all the users. So no one kind of, kind of got with it. So we kind of knew, and indeed most of you would also know that this thing's going to be you know, really big. The way that we're communicating with our customers is more than just thinking about a web experience. And nowadays, it's more than just thinking about a single experience on, say, uh, a, a mobile, uh, an iPad, or, or, or whatever. We need to think about how people will communicate with us and how we're going to communicate with them across all of these channels. Now, um, what we're going to be talking uh, about today during Juice, let me just get this back, is uh, different approaches people have to, to testing, communicating, getting feedback from customers throughout lots of different, uh, different environments and, and different contexts. Now, when we first started the company, uh, what we concentrated on was, was usability. The uh, primary reason for that was that basically most websites were really, really rubbish in those days. This was kind of a new medium. People were used to communicating face to face, maybe even by phone. But really, this, this kind of new digital thing was, was a bit of a mystery. And lots of people were just throwing things up there. And it gave a really bad touch point to most customers. So we had a great market there. Um, a lot of what we did was, was evaluations and also this thing called uh, usability testing, which we'll be talking uh, more about later. Um, the thing about that, though, was um, it's kind of satisfying because you, you got something that was rubbish and you made it slightly less rubbish. And conversions increased, and uh, you, you know, uh, satisfaction increased, and all of those kind of things. Um, but it really didn't kind of get you there. You weren't doing something that was fundamentally right from the outset. So your your ideals would be up here, but what you were doing is going from something that was really quite rubbish and making it slightly less rubbish. Um, you know, to some of our clients, we would, we, we would be polite and say, you know, we're, we're sticking a Band-Aid over a gaping wound or we're putting lipstick on a pig. Or to our friends such as you, you know, we'd say, effectively, we're polishing a turd, right? And we've never had aspirations, and I don't think any of you also have aspirations to, to, to polish turds effectively. What we really want to do is, is reach this nirvana of this experience that we want to offer our, our customers, our clients, our users, whatever you, you choose to call them. So the process around achieving that um, which we discovered, and, and indeed we've, we, we've kind of helped pioneer to a certain extent some of the methods there, is user-centered design. So there's nothing kind of rocket science-y about user-centered design. Sometimes it's called a philosophy, sometimes it's a process, sometimes it's an approach. But basically, it's about thinking about and testing and getting data from your customers or your users at every stage during the process. Uh, the development process. Uh, and that process may be firstly doing research to understand who people are, and what the needs are, what the business needs are, what the competitors are doing. Then modeling all of that data in some form using things like personas, storyboards, user flows, all of those kind of things that many of you will be aware of. And then making uh, architecting, architecting a solution, creating blueprints, then starting to design those things and then launch and measure and go through that cycle again. All of those processes, you're testing those at each stage of the process. And that really works. It works for software. It works for um, websites. It works for de designing apps. It works for kind of anything when you're having an interactive process. Um, what we realized that those same kind of processes, the, the research, the modeling, the understanding, and the testing, also work across all sorts of different channels as well. Uh, real life channels, things like museums where we've done uh, a number of different projects, things like uh, shopper projects, so people uh, choosing to buy shampoo in Tesco, etc. Um, people opening packages, people looking at packages, people uh, digesting instructions and information. All of these different things require input from our users so that we can understand you know, what they're doing. So we can use this insight and these techniques across the board in many different uh, domains in order to create a better experience. And the kind of stage that we're at, to, we're at now is where um, effectively smartphones have put the glue together for people in different contexts interacting with, uh, with organizations. So it used to be before people were very channel-centric. 
Uh, they may be a web customer, they may be a, an online customer, they may be a phone customer, but now that kind of distinction is really blurring. And in fact, that we shouldn't really think about different channels anymore. We should just think about the experience. And this is really why we, we talk about JUICE. Apart from the fact that it's a nice acronym, we also think that the, the whole kind of interactive thing is, is really, really important. So this is the first of our kind of uh, toes in the water about talking about this, providing a framework for all of this. Um, we don't prevent, pretend that we've got uh, all the answers. Um, indeed, we've got a few speakers here that can give us some of their experience. And indeed, you're all here uh, and are welcome to, to participate. We encourage you to ask questions and, of course, during the network sessions, uh, talk to us uh, about these kind of things as well. So if you see anyone with uh, a purple badge, that's someone from Bunnyfoot. So um, you're welcome to uh, talk to them about uh, any different uh, things. You're also welcome, of course, to, to network amongst each other, and hopefully we'll facilitate that as well. Um, we've also got uh, a demonstration of eye tracking. So James, where's James? So James is going to give a demonstration of um, wearable eye tracker later. This is used for some research in some different real-world offline contexts. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, go and see uh, James later on. Okay, without any more from me, um, if you're interested in, in, in Twitter, we've got um, uh, the hashtag VFJuice. Uh, you can get on the Wi-Fi, it's Paramount, and the, uh, the key is Paramount as well. Um, first, I'm going to introduce our uh, first speaker. It's uh, Tom Rigglesworth. He's a comedian. Uh, I first was aware of Tom a couple of years ago when I heard his uh, Radio 4 show uh, open Letters, which is actually being replayed at the moment, I think, on, on Radio 4 as well, so you can still catch it on iPlayer. Um, he was, uh, it was an open letter about an experience he had on, uh, I won't mention the company, but it was on uh, a well-known train company that, uh, that runs up north. Um, and he's got various other uh, different experiences within those open letters as well. So he does a lot of actual material on uh, the whole customer experience thing. But also why we were interested in, in con contacting Tom was uh, actually he goes through a whole uh, process of, of testing when he's testing for his award-winning shows that he runs uh, in Edinburgh as well. So award-winning shows don't just happen, they get feedback from their, their audience. So, so hopefully Tom will uh, enlighten uh, us about some of that later. So without further ado, uh, Tom Rigglesworth. <laughs> 